11, 1865, two days after Lee's surrender at Appomattox, Lincoln delivered a speech outlining his plans for peace and reconstruction. In the audience was John Wilkes Booth, a successful actor born and raised in Maryland. Booth was a fervent believer in slavery and white supremacy. Upon hearing Lincoln's words, he said to a companion, now by God, I'll put him through. That is the last speech he will ever make. After failing in two attempts earlier in the year to kidnap the president, Booth, growing desperate, came up with an even more sinister plan to save the Confederacy. He decided Lincoln must be killed. April 14th, it was a good Friday, and the war has been over for a week. Lincoln, for the first time, was starting to see that things were looking up. That morning, Booth learned that the Lincolns were to attend a performance of Our American Cousin at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. Booth and his co-conspirators believed the simultaneous assassinations of Lincoln, Vice President Andrew Johnson, General Ulysses S. Grant, and Secretary of State William H. Seward would throw the U.S. government into disarray. The Lincolns arrived late for the comedy. But the president was reportedly in a fine mood and laughed during the production. Lincoln occupied a private box above the stage with his wife, Mary Todd Lincoln. Ulysses S. Grant had planned to accompany the president and his wife, but during the day, he decided to see his son in New Jersey. In Grant's place, Mary invited her friend, Clara Harris, and her fiance, a young army officer named Henry Rathbone. At 10.15, Booth slipped into the president's box, holding a dagger in his left hand and a pistol in his right. Booth waited for the laugh of the crowd and fired a single shot into the back of Lincoln's head. Officer Rathbone jumped to ascertain Booth, but Booth got the upper hand and stabbed Rathbone in the shoulder. Booth leapt onto the stage. He landed wrong and broke his leg. Hubbling towards the center stage, he held up his knife looked at the stunned audience and shouted, Sic Semper Tyrannis, thus ever to tyrants. At first, the crowd interpreted the unfolding drama as part of the production, but a scream from the First Lady told them otherwise. Although Booth broke his leg in the fall, he managed to leave the theater and escape from Washington, D.C. on horseback. Several soldiers carried Lincoln to a boarding house across the street and placed him on a bed. When the Surgeon General arrived at the house, he concluded that Lincoln could not be saved and would probably die during the night. The other targets escaped death. Lewis Powell, one of Booth's accomplices, went to Secretary of State Seward's house. Seward was in a carriage accident earlier and was recovering in bed. His children answered the door. They tried to fight Powell off. Lewis Powell made it to their father's bedroom and stabbed him multiple times in the face. Thinking he succeeded in his mission, Powell escaped into the night. But Seward survived, thanks to a neck brace he wore from the carriage accident. Powell will be apprehended later that night. Another accomplice, George Azerot, could not bring himself to attempt to assassinate Vice President Johnson. Vice President Andrew Johnson, members of Lincoln's cabinet, and several of his closest friends stood around the president's bedside in the boarding house. The First Lady Mary Todd Lincoln was too overcome with shock and grief. Lincoln was pronounced dead at 7.22 a.m. on April 15, 1865, at the age of 56. Someone in the room said, now he belongs to the ages. News of the president's death traveled quickly, and by the end of the day, flags across the country flew at half-mast. Businesses were closed, and people who had recently rejoiced at the end of the Civil War now reeled from Lincoln's shocking assassination. Never before had a president been assassinated. His remains were boarded onto a train that conveyed him to Springfield, Illinois, where he lived before becoming president. Tens of thousands of Americans lined the railroad route and paid their respects to their fallen leader during the train's solemn progression through the North. There were two coffins on the train. 
Lincoln's, and his son, William Wallace Lincoln, known as Willie, who died in the White House of typhoid fever in the middle of the Civil War. As the nation mourned, Union soldiers were hot on the trail of John Wilkes Booth, whom many in the audience had immediately recognized. After fleeing the Capitol, he and an accomplished David Harold made their way across the river and headed towards Southern Maryland. The pair stopped at the home of Samuel Mudd, a doctor who treated Booth's broken leg. Mudd's actions earned him a life sentence that was later commuted. Then they sought refuge from Thomas Jones, a Confederate agent, before securing a boat to row across the Potomac to Virginia. On April 26, Union troops surrounded the Virginia barn where Booth and Harold were hiding out and set fire to it, hoping to flush the fugitives out. Harold surrendered, but Booth remained inside. As the blaze intensified, Sergeant Boston Colbert took aim and fatally shot Booth. The dying assassin was dragged to a porch. Realizing he was now paralyzed from the neck down, Booth looked at his hands and muttered his last words. Useless. Useless. Four of Booth's co-conspirators were convicted for their part in the assassination and executed by hanging. They included David Harold and Mary Surratt, the first woman to be put to death by the federal government, whose boarding house had served as a meeting place for the would-be kidnappers. Abraham Lincoln is one of the, if not the most, honored president in American history. He is known as a man who saved the Union and freed the slaves. Within days of his death, his life was being compared to Jesus Christ, both of whom died on a Good Friday. Lincoln was portrayed to a worshiping public as a self-made man, the liberator of slaves, and the savior of the Union who had given his life so that others could be free. President Lincoln became Father Abraham, a near mythological hero a lawgiver to African Americans, and a masterpiece of God sent to save the Union. His great achievement was his ability to mobilize the nation by appealing to its best ideals, in malice towards none, in pursuit of a more perfect Union.